I would actually like to imagine that, like, someone comes on a show, like, everyone's like, everyone's recorder's gone? Okay, I just have a guess, like, everybody, all at once, touch screw to scream, <laughs> yeah, my levels are fine, <laughs> alright, cool. <laughs> that's how we line up, just, that's how we line up our record, that'd be the funniest thing to do, is to play it off very serious, be like, okay, this is how we line up our recordings, so, um... You know the Tusken Raider scream? Like, say it very serious. You know the Tusken Raider scream in um, Star Wars? Yeah, so what we do is we just all at the same time just do the... <laughs> Especially if it's like a really serious... Like, you, you just you get somebody who's not even like associated with comedy whatsoever. Well, I'm not even saying, like, explain it to them. Just being like, okay, hey man, how's it going? Uh, do you got your files going? Okay, cool. Yeah, one second. Um, Spencer, yours going? Okay, uh, we'll do the test. One, two, three. <laughs> Right, yeah, we're good. All right, is your files? Yeah, yeah, mine's not too in the red. Right. Just <laughs> don't even explain it. Like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> just like, geez, that, that, that's what these guys do. That's fucking weird. <laughs> oh, that'd be awesome. But uh, hey, welcome to the Old Man Orange Podcast. I'm Spencer Scott Holmes, and I'm Rain Donigan. And that's how we test our mics, boy. I tell you what, <laughs> mm-hmm. it hasn't let me down yet. It hasn't let me down yet. No. So uh, today we're doing something kind of a. Uh, more a little focused in. Lately, we've been all having kind of more themed episodes around retrospects. This isn't that exactly. We'll be talking uh, about Superman generally today, but mostly issue 1000 of Action Comics that came out. And this is like one of those ones, like, I feel kind of bad. It's like, I haven't bought a Superman book in like a little bit of a while. Well, generally, I've been kind of a little bit light on buying books. So I'm like, you gotta fucking finish the ones you already bought before you start buying more books. And that still doesn't really stop me, but I've kind of toned back. So it feels like one of those ones, like, you're like, oh, but Superman 1000 is coming out, gotta go get it, or Action Comics 1000, gotta get it, and you almost feel like that kind of person, because, you know, it's probably one of those books where it's like, there's probably people coming into the stores that have been like, you know what, I've never bought a Superman comic and since I was, like, a child, but Superman 1000, or Action Comics 1000, I have to have it, almost like, kind of like Death of Superman was in the 90s, and that's not, like, a bad thing, I think that's actually kind of a good thing, because it's just like, it's like a historical event, and that's where I feel like, you know what, we gotta read this book, when it comes out, hey, you know what, let's talk about it, because it's going to be cool. And, you know, I just heard on a couple of podcasts in about the last couple of months, some of the guys talking about it, like Dan Jurgens and um, oh, what's Brad his? Meltzer. Yeah, Brad Meltzer, he talked about it too. So it's just like, I was just getting excited for it anyways. I'm like, that's just kind of a cool one, just a bunch of little mini stories, you know, from everybody kind of giving their love to, like, Superman. Yeah, and I have a bunch of Superman comics right now. I got, like, probably a... Half a half a half a stack, half a half a foot stack of um, Superman comics that are always mostly stuff that were uh, New Fifty Two, I guess, was ending and it was leading into Rebirth, uh-huh. and how um, the New Fifty Two Superman essentially dies, and then a Superman from I think Earth from Earth One or one of the discontinued timelines comes in with his with. Uh, that ver- that world's version of Lois and a kid, so it's kind of like okay, Superman's no longer some guy in his uh, late twenties, early thirties. Superman's now like a full grown ass man with like an eleven year old kid and has like you know has been married for some time. So it's one of those things like okay, that's actually kind of interesting dynamic because they keep on. I mean, I know eventually what's going to probably happen. John, his son, is probably going to die or they're probably going to turn him in or he's going to get transported to another place turn him in like him from... take him in Lois I, I, can, I don't know I can't understand this kid his new finical ways and everything like that I want a new kid <laughs> uh, Clark you can't just turn in uh, that's what they used to do on my old planet you just turned a kid in you, did, you didn't like what you got you took it back <laughs> you, you, just, you, you went you back just... to that factory and you said fuck this you got it wrong I want my refund if you're not going to let me have sex you better give me the right kid all you say is you just say, this is Krypton! <laughs> Leonidas, that kid, right into the fucking Phantom Zone. Yeah, I, Spends I away some... in that little flipping that little flipping diamond thing through space. Dude, when my father sent his, like, kind of telegrams, he, he literally filmed a lot of this stuff, and he thought it was fucking funny, because some people literally just turned their kid in just to kick him down the pit. They're like, well, you know, I kind of <laughs> like my kid, but you know what, fuck it, I want to kick him down the pit, so, you know, I'm going with it. We'll make another. Like, it's... <laughs> What, it's like the fucking planet's gonna explode. Studio audience laugh track. It's just like, Jara, what are you doing? Are you, are you filming people kicking their kids down again? Oh, uh, no, n- no, definitely not doing that. Research, honey, research. It's fucking science, <laughs> duh. You know what I fucking do? You know, 
even though this this is how I put you know food on the table because they don't pay me for science. You know, they'll pay me for these stupid videos on you know the crypto on internet here on Cryptube here. <laughs> <laughs> Cryptube <laughs> sounds kind of like a Mortal Kombat thing more than anything else. But... I was gonna say that sounds more like fucking like what like the what's their biggest like you know like like bl- like bl- like Bloods have the their other one like Cryptube. Then you got Blood. Oh, you're thinking like that, like that guy. I was thinking like a crypt, like a <laughs> you know like a fucking coffin or whatnot. Oh, crypts. Okay, crypts. not crypts yeah. like C R I P S. I was thinking, yeah. My bad. You know, that, that kind of style. <laughs> I knew the spelling. I just heard it a different way. <laughs> they got their shit together. They got, they got a startup going. Like, what if that's like what it is? Like in the future, it's literally like gangs are the ones. It's like, you know what? We started making business ventures. And next thing you know, we are the guys fucking leading the future. Hedge funds, all that. Just put our differences aside. And hey, yeah. It's like, it's like the bloods. They're like the new Elon Musk. Venting shit left and right. You just see a fucking, like, raised Cadillac flying into fucking space. <laughs> but it's like, it's like yeah. instead of being like that heavy metal movie, we're going to change it around a bit here. That was all I thought when I saw that car go in there. It's like, dude, it's just like fucking heavy metal. It's like, we're, we're literally living in the heavy metal time frame. We'll get back to Superman in just a second, but it is one of those things. Like, you know, you, first off, you know, Musk is more than likely a heavy metal fan. You know that. Oh my god! Second, By far, when he, whenever if anybody sends a spaceman in a car to go fly around in space, where else do you get that from? Yeah, there's that, and that, <laughs> that's that's a whole other. Like, okay, put some titties on that space shuttle going up there. Uh, <laughs> well, but this is gonna go on live TV. Fuck it, put the titties on there. Just put some big <laughs> ass fucking tits, so like when aliens come by, like, hey, that's a cool place to hang out. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go where this thing came from. We got, they got more of this shit here. <laughs> like high five flying in and a flying saucer. <laughs> I don't remember what it was, but there's some. I, I want to say it was Starbarians. Their spaceship is just a chrome T Rex with tits. <laughs> <laughs> just heavy metal as fuck. Well, that's no, like there's uh, that movie fucking um uh, shit. That one. It's it's the it's Roger Corbin's like. Hey, I'm gonna do Star Wars. Um. Oh, uh, Battle Beyond the Stars. Yeah, Battle Beyond the Stars, and that ship's just got, like, major fucking, like, pretty much, like, tits hanging on the bottom of it. <laughs> well, like, Elon Musk, I, that's just a whole other level of fuck you money. We're just like, you know what? Not only am I going to just launch something into space, I want to throw my old car. Is there something wrong with the car? No, it's, like, only eight years old. It's fine, but fuck it. I want to go to Mars. Are feels- you going on it? No, not really. I just, let's just strap this thing. Don't don't bother. We'll do more than bungee cord. We got the money for it. We'll just strap that thing on, send it into fucking space, and it doesn't matter if I never fucking see it again. My car will be waiting for me on Mars when I get there. It almost sounds like a Sam Raimi thing to do is just to use the old classic and send that up there. It's like it's been everywhere else, and now it needs to go to space. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I wonder, no, but no, that dude's a mad genius. But to bring it back around, he's almost kind of like, I look at Elon Musk, and I don't know, I can't tell, is he the world's next Tony Stark, or is he the world's next Lex Luthor? Yeah, I know, it is one of those ones, like, which category does he fit into? You because know. he because he, he has that whole thing, he's just like, hey, look what I made, what? I made flamethrowers, you could buy them, like, it's, it's called Boring Flamethrower, it's from my company that's just gonna literally bore holes underneath Los Angeles, like, <laughs> What? Yeah, I'm just gonna sell some fucking flamethrowers. Um, you know, it's kind of illegal. We just can't really put them out there. And you're just making a lot of these things. You're not gonna sell them all. Whatever! It's publicity. People talk about me selling flamethrowers and how it didn't pan out. I don't give a fuck. Check this shit out. I'm gonna go sneak fu- sneak up on the fucking intern. <laughs> just shoots a flame right past his head. Look at that little I, I still need those do- I still need those documents by 11, okay? Get that, get going on that. <laughs> He's just fucking rolling on the ground. Like, ah, ah, ah. He just goes back into his fucking, like, into his fucking office, gets a massage while he overlooks stocks. There's a math equation to cure cancer in his head. Exactly. Just so much stuff going on at once just because he can. Because he can and he will and he won't stop. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty sure it's kind of one of those things, like, because Lex Luthor has that whole thing. Because Elon Musk, he does seem sometimes detached when you see him in interviews, but they just do crazy shit like that. Like, how do you not like that guy? Just the level of just know-how to get it done and all that. And the, on top of that, though, it's like, the thing about Lex Luthor is, most, like, 
every so often they paint Lex Luthor like he's a douchebag to the world, but most of the time they paint it like the world loves him and everyone's like, what's Superman's problem with this guy? I mean, I love Superman, but I really like Lex Luthor too, and I don't see why these guys have so much so much bad blood between them. It's just like, well, you know, the guy is kind of a dick, wants to destroy you all, and I can't really just come out and always prove it because there's always some kind of shit. He always has some kind of contingency plan ahead of time. So I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's almost like Elon Musk. Everybody's like, oh, he's the greatest guy ever. But maybe behind the scenes, Superman's like, no, he's a fucking asshole. Like, what are you guys doing? Come on. Yeah. Shit, don't you see what I see? I mean, I know you can't see what I see, but still. Still. You squint really hard. You might just see a little bit of it. <laughs> um, maybe. I'm not sure if you guys work that way. No. Uh, so this book, Superman uh, 1000... Speaking it's of Lex a... Luthor, they literally have, like, there's uh, one by, uh, what's his name, uh, fucking, um, oh, I Neil remember. Adams, the one where it's like, that one's just more like Lex Luthor's just like a total ass, he's like, come on, Lex, let's play a good old game of chess, ah, oh, Superman, oh, I can beat you at this, you little fuck, I'm gonna get you, don't worry about that, it's just like, oh, Lex, you're just being an ass again, let's sit down and really do this, and that's like, in like, three moves, Superman no. puts him in checkmate. What are you gonna say? Not, not in, uh, not, not in this one, right, that's a different book? That's in Superman 1000. I didn't get that one. Wait, so super, where maybe they have different ones out there. Wait, so there's one where... It, it's about the dead chess. center. It's, it's Neil Adams' like fucking story. Neil Adams? There's one that I was reading where it's like they... I didn't see him playing chess. I saw that they were hanging where... Is it where they're at the planetarium? No, that's like a little bit later on. Did I just full on miss a story in here? <laughs> what, is like the pages stuck together or something? <laughs> like, like, oh shit. just jerked off on, like, whoa, it's one where he has a shirt off. Okay. Well, that's odd. It was uh, Lex Luthor with his shirt off. Uh, sure, <laughs> I guess everybody has their own things. Yeah. I'm looking, and I don't see the one where he's playing chess with Lex Luthor. I don't see that one in here. I don't remember that one. Maybe there's some stories. Maybe they did that thing where, did you, which, which, It starts you have on the... page 44 is what I see here. <laughs> page 44? My pages aren't even numbered. Hmm. Well, whatever. Uh, maybe we'll both have something different to talk about then, because mine, does yours have the 40s looking cover? Uh, well, I, I, have, the, I have the comicsology version, so... Maybe Cause... some don't have all the same stories. Tell me that about that one, because I don't see, I don't remember reading that one in here. Well, it's pretty much called Superman in the Game by Paul Levitz and Neil Adams. And then it's got Hi-Fi doing the colors and so on. But um, it's pretty much just Superman shows up and he's like, Yo, Lex! I got a fucking game to do. He's like, oh, Superman, you little fuck, you're coming here to mess with me. He's like, no, 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 let's just play a game. You know, I got chess. And he's looking like, did you steal that from the fucking museum? He's like, no, this came from my house. It's old. Shut the fuck up, Lex. Let's just play it. <laughs> and they sit down. And, of course, Lex was like, ah, I will be white. Not that it has anything to do with stereotypes. I just want the first move. <laughs> I want the white power. <laughs> he's like, oh, Lex, you and your white power. He he is he does have a bald head, so he's already halfway there. Well, even though like I'll say, is Lex Luthor though? Like in the animated series, in certain ones, he looks like he's a black guy though. So it, it just depends like what version he is. But um, but he he literally makes a reference to choosing the white one. No. <laughs> and then like they play, and then Superman literally, in like three or four moves, he beats Lex Luthor. He's like checkmate, <laughs> and then Lex Luthor flips a switch, and all these like green chains come up around Superman to hold him down, and he's like, well. Good thing Mr. Miracle created this for me. And he, like, throws down a mother box. It's like, yep, gave me two mi minutes of immunity. So, fuck you, Lex. Checkmate again. And then I, I can't remember exactly how it is. <laughs> Still, that I think of that. <laughs> fuck but you again. 80 years. <laughs> 80 years. I really wish that's, like, almost like the exact same dialogue. It, it really has kind of, like, old-timey feel. Dialogue. It's like, ha-ha. I am Lex Luthor. I am evil. Suck my balls. Well, and, these guys... And then it have... goes into, uh, I guess that is it. Fucking, like... That's it. Like I, he's like, it's like, oh, Mister Miracle, he can do all kinds of miracles, except for he says something about like Lex Luthor. What does it say here? It, it goes except for making you play fair. <laughs> that sounds very like they're probably trying to make a throwback to the old fashioned ah ha ha hands on the hips kind of thing. <laughs> It'd be funny if it was more like except for giving you hair. <laughs> it just goes in like the biggest laugh. <laughs> just starts rubbing his fucking curl. You stupid bald fuck! <laughs> just fucking cock slaps him and flies out. <laughs> Neil Adams was very, very like 
persist and assertive about he has to cock slap him. Can he just... Well, first off, he's Superman. He doesn't have to slap him. He can just fly out of there. He's above that. No, no. It's been 80 years. Let him cock slap him. What if he just, like, just slaps him or pushes him? Like, fuck that shit! <laughs> fuck that shit! I'm Neil fucking Adams! You know what I mean? <laughs> if it wasn't for fucking me, where do you think you guys would be? Uh, Neil, uh... You, 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 it's okay. You know, if Neil wants a cock slap him, just, just put it in there. But the, we, we gotta put a 17 on our Superman book. Ugh. Can we can we cock slap him off screen? Is that, was that possible? Could it be a silhouette? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, but, but no, oh, that's, yeah. that that story comes right before there. There's that kind of cool Jeff Johns and Richard Donner one in there. Jeff Johns, Richard Donner one. The Jeff Johns. I actually wasn't keeping track of all the writers. I saw the Bendez one. I saw the uh, which one call it the. Uh, um, What's his name? Um, uh, Scott Snyder. De- Death of Death of Superman guy. Death of Superman guy. Oh, Dan know. Jurgens. Dan Jurgens. Yeah. You know what? I think if I had to guess, because you're saying stories that I don't see in here. I remember well, I had the Jeff Johns one. Well, here's the car one. I'm, I'll just ex- I'll just kind of sum this one up. The car thought, one. I remember that? That was a good one. That's the Jeff Johns and Richard Donner one, where it's like the car from the first cover. And it's like the guys. Oh, pulled. I didn't even realize that. That was what that's supposed to be. So that's yeah, the it's car, like that's the. <laughs> yeah, it's the car that Superman's holding up over the first cover. I thought that was, I'm like, that's fucking a cool thing. Kind of like, well, what's the after story of how this car got all fucking dinged up? Yeah, that's right. Oh, that makes so much more sense now. I just thought I was just trying to go for an old-timey vibe. But no, that makes a lot of sense. That's the car that Superman lifted from the issue one. That is clever as fuck. I never, I didn't even put that together right there. That, that's Jeez. definitely a Jeff Johns thing there. Probably a, who knows, Richard Donner too. That, that, I, I know, I was like, that's one of the most clever things in this entire book. I thought that was awesome. By Jeff Johns and Richard Donner. Yeah, that makes sense right there. Because Richard, because Richard, uh, Richard Donner loves all the retro shit. So, yeah. Um, yeah, the whole thing with that story, that was one of my favorite ones, and it really makes me want to see, because it's, it's almost like more of like kind of art house Superman, but still kind of adds to it, because that, that could have actually happened in the comics right there, and it doesn't seem like it's too, like, cheap, it's, it's obviously taking place in the 40s, or 1939. Yeah, because it literally says it like, well, it doesn't say the exact year, but you know, you can tell like, I know why your father, or why you're an ass. It's because your dad died in World War One, and, you know, your mom, you know, when you were 13, she passed away, and they had to put you in an orphanage. And in the orphanage, you know, nobody gave a flying fuck about you, so they kicked you out at 18, and you've been on the streets ever since. Yeah, that one was really good. Now, you know what it really makes me want to see? It makes me want to see a period piece, Other Earth Superman movie. Really makes you want to see like a 1930s Superman movie, and just you know have like I don't really know what the story would be, just maybe something kind of a little bit more of like kind of I guess Richard Donner esque, but not leaning too hard into the aesthetic of that, more of just kind of like that tone, that vibe, yet kind of a I, I just kind of like the dusty kind of Kansas feel this one has, just from the look of it, you know. Yeah, well, it's almost like one of those ones, like, because that's the thing is, I, I would love, that's kind of like what bothers me nowadays in, like, movies, is that everything nowadays has to be continual. Everything has to be, like, it's a fucking TV show that never, like, stops. And even TV shows, it's like, you almost never see the one-and-done episodes anymore. It's like, I would love just to have, like, a Superman movie that comes out, and it has nothing to fucking do with any other Superman movie out there. It's just literally, like, a one-shot movie of two hours or two and a half hours. It could be, you know any time period whenever somebody wants to make it and just like the next year or two the, the next superman movie can just be its own standalone thing like a 007 film it's like I, I think that would be i think that's almost like the better way to do things especially in superhero stuff and i know that like every marvel fan probably doesn't like that as much because that seems like marvel is like fucking is like continual as you know you can fucking get but something special about that just being like having that open freedom of like you know what let's just try something you know what i mean because if it doesn't work that's okay well you know, we're gonna just do another movie in two years and just see what happens there and this is a perfect example it's like dude get richard fucking donner back to direct this with jeff johns and have him fucking make this story into like a bigger kind of thing you know use this element but then just add all kinds of stuff and have this cool late 30s you know 40s superman thing and you could still have him fight some kind of like you know maybe a uh, '30s version of a more modern villain or of a later villain, you know, yeah, something exactly. like that. To so still give it a, a bigger, grander scale of some kind. I mean, still kind of give it that old timey vibe, but not not so much of like, oh, we don't have to have him maybe fight down like a mothership or anything. Maybe like another Kryptonian or something to that level. So he has something more to stand up against. Because that was the thing about Superman Returns, which bothered people was. 
okay, we live in this, we live in the age we live in now. We we could do all this cool computer effects shit, but he's still just kind of stopping airplanes and r- random like like uh, trains going off the rails. And to be wrong, that's cool, and I want to see that in Superman. But you want to mix it up, and you want to actually see him fucking punch something after a while. So yeah, exactly. I think that you, you need that big battle at the end almost. Yeah, so I think that that would be a cool idea right there. But just going on what the story is. It's a very short story, but that Jeff Johns one, what's interesting about that is, first off, you just pointed that out. That's supposed to be the car from issue one cover, and that's so fucking smart right there. I didn't even realize that at first. Um, that, uh, I, I, the, the, when, he, when he talks to the guy, he's like, look, I know who you are. You, uh, you kind of, a, you're shitty to women, you kind of bully people, but you can change your life and, you know, no one's going to change it for you. It is this sort of like, maybe tough love's not the right word for it, but it's something kind of like that, more of just kind of like, it's, it's almost kind of like a very, because now I think modern Superman would be a little bit more like, he'd be straight with him, but he would be a little bit more like, everyone has the power to change their own life, even you, where this, where this is like, this is much more like angry 30s Superman, just kind of like, Dad talk. Dad means well, but he's gonna tell you like, quit crying like a bitch. You'll never get a woman if you do that, boy. I say that because I love you. You know, so want something kind of yeah. more like that effect. And this is much more of like a no nonsense bullshit. Be a man kind of thing. Yeah, and that's what I kind of like. But I, I love the way that almost like Superman's drawn. I think it's this one, one of the, like the old '30s ones. He almost has like this sort of like if Babe Ruth was like a bodybuilder kind of look. If that makes sense. Yeah, he does almost look kind of like. Uh... I mean, it's probably intentional. What was the George Reeves? Looks kind of like George Reeves in that one in particular. Yeah, like like it has that kind of look where it's like he's still big and strong, but he's not like super like ripped and defined like a modern bodybuilder. More has that old strong man kind of look, and I think that's just kind of cool in itself. And that's also almost another example, like because there's about three stories in this book that are kind of like old timey Superman, and that's where it'd almost be just cool to do a sweet like period piece movie and just sort of combine elements of that kind of stuff. And flesh out this kind of cool, long, solo movie. You know, just, just just to do it. Why not? Like, it doesn't have to be a Superman origin story by any means. It could be almost like, he's already Superman the second you get in the movie. But instead, it just happens to take place in, like, 1942 or something. One that I thought was very interesting. And who wrote this one? I'm going to double check that real quick. You're going to see me. We just I just read it a little bit before the pod. We even started the podcast. I'm just double checking this. There's one that actually kind of explains why Superman... His, in, in the rest of the DC universe, has been going through so many different variations and how they always kind of retcon things and act as if, like, th- this never happened. Uh, this story is by Peter J. Tomasi and artwork by Patrick Gleason, colorist Alejand- um, Alejandro Sanchez, and letter Tom uh, Nepal- uh, Napoloto. I'm going to probably mispronounce the fuck out of that. Anyway, um, <laughs> in every, every page... And this picture is one single page with a bunch of narration from Superman. And it starts off saying, Videl Savage caught me and then put me through some kind of warp hole through sending me back in time. And every single time I went back and I was a different version of myself. And I was, there was one point I was in the 1930s and my suit like th- was like this and I didn't have heat vision or anything like that. Then I went over into the, uh, you know, a few more of that. Then there was, then I went over into the 40s, and I was actually, it was a lot more black and white. Things were easier to, like, good, bad, good, bad. And I found myself helping out the military here and there. Then I escaped that timeline and found myself in, um, in the fifth, in the, in the fifties and the sixties where shit got really weird and really sci-fi. And it, and he says, and then it reached the point where he started, uh, Videl Savage started grabbing my friends and family, throwing them in there too, and I still had to figure out a way and get out of there. So it's like, oh, okay, so you guys found a way to make all this random continuity, how all these characters, why Batman, why, why all these characters are like in their 30s and the 40s and still like in their 30s to 40s today. So that's interesting. Yeah, no, that, that one was a really cool one. I think that that's the comic that had... It's that drawing where Superman's stopping the train from, like, the little hillbilly kid. That's the yeah. That's like he looked like Babe Ruth is, like, a bodybuilder almost. Like, he looks like kind of, like, going to that picture in particular, because that is a really cool picture. That's like a bad so, that That'd make, like, for a cool poster right there. And we were ta- we were on Paint It Black a little bit ago, and we were talking, about, like, Pete, uh, Pete mentioned uh, the Frank Miller drawing where Superman just has a fucking massive hog by Frank Miller. Somebody's all like, oh, oh, I can top that shit. Here we go. <laughs> yeah this was just like fucking just and fucking that little kid looks that mo- kid's like looking like oh shit that's coming right toward my face 
<laughs> well, it's like he's like he's that like super. There's hillbilly kid, and then there's like bowl cuts, <laughs> bowl, bowl cut uh, overalls, Patch no overalls. shoes, gr- like gr- like uh, great great depression, you know? Yeah. So, so and the kid's like, "Oh fuck! I didn't hear that! I didn't hear that train on rolling up on me when I was grabbing my fucking ball." <laughs> like this, I, I've like been so- deaf ever since my father beat me. <laughs> You can see that this Superman looks like this version of Superman, because, yeah, that, that one... The other one, he looks a little bit more of kind of like George Reeves kind of thicker, but this dude just looks more like... You know what? He was probably really built back in the day, and he could probably kick anybody's ass back in the day, but he, you know, he's not in horrible shape, but still but drinks a lot and doesn't exercise like he used to, so he has all this husk left over. But something about that Superman that you never really see is kind of cool. I'm just looking at that. Yeah. It's just like this angry, like, this looks like Superman that would, like, slap you over the head. Like, boy, what the fuck you doing chasing a ball in front of a train? Yeah. Didn't your mom teach you better? I want to see, like, angry Southern Superman. Just, like, he's still a really good guy, but he's just got that Southern accent and, and like, almost, like, lifestyle. <laughs> Boy, you your parents ain't raised you like a Christian. <laughs> yeah. God damn it, boy, you get out the fucking tracks and get your ball out of here. It just pops it like, you don't deserve that no more. <laughs> <laughs> just kicks it. Somewhere what? in Uganda here. now, <laughs> that kid probably needs it more than you. He writes down a fucking address on him because he's paper. Go get yourself a job at the mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's America, damn it. Build up some character here. Obviously, you can't handle being a child no more. <laughs> <laughs> You lost your privileges. Oh, but no, I, I really like that picture too. And even though it's like, yeah, he still is. He's like still well built, but he just has this like like a husky built. Like reminds me just like when you see old p- pictures of like almost like old strongmans, like circus strongmans from like the 30s and 40s. You know, it, it's it's a cool look. Yeah, and then it even kind of goes through like, oh look, here is the animated universe. Ba- here's the animated universe Superman with combined with uh, the uh, movie. Did I say Batman or Superman? You said I think you said Superman, but I don't really know. Okay, yeah, I'm just so when I when I when I think animated series, uh, Batman's always the first thing that comes to mind. But anyway, it's it's kind of like the combined animated a- animated um, series Superman as well as movie Superman because then you turn like you, you get to the '90s, you see them fighting Mongol, you see Steel, you see '90s version of Superboy back there. Next page, I want to say it's animated series Zod and uh, I forget the. Uh, girl's name and you see superman like in the uh stuck in the uh phantom zone. phantom zone like spinny glass thing with the movie version of the of the uh of the uh fortress of solitude in the background it's like okay so all the variations those are different time zones as well that he had to fix and adjust so that's always just kind of interesting when they find a way to bring in how all this stuff they retcon it's like oh no it's part of the history he just went back in time and fixed it or whatever. I know, I know it's just shit they're making up, but still, it's just interesting to me how they do that. Well, I think that one's kind of a cool story too, because I think almost each page is like a different artist because there's that one where Frank Miller, where he's getting hit by the lightning bolt. Is that Frank Miller who actually did it's that? Got one? A, that's the only page that has, he has says Frank Miller's name at the bottom. Maybe it's one of those ones where it's just like in memory or not memory of Frank Miller, but something like it says Frank Miller at the bottom. And it says uh, Peter, whatever the, the I don't know if it's the guy that wrote it or what. Colorist. Yeah, so. that looks like that looks like it actually could be Frank Miller. Yeah, that is Frank Miller, definitely. I thought that was someone's homage to Frank Miller. Yeah, so it's like so, and, well, because each one's like different from each other. So I think it is this this one story is almost like a different one. I like that picture where uh, it's uh, the black suit Superman, and it's like it's not really having like the mullet. He has more like almost like Casey Jones long hair, and he's mm-hmm. holding up against uh, Dark Side and everything like that. And steals in the background, and Superboy's like, ah. Well, that's Mongol, yeah, but... Oh, um, that is? Oh, yeah. yeah, I guess you're right. I was looking at a small picture. Mongol's kind of like bitch-ass, bitch-ass uh, dark side. That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, but, uh, um, and it's got, yeah, cool. the, the steel almost looks like he's got, like, a bat helmet on, almost. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like he's got little bat ears. <laughs> but it's a, it, it, that's a cool-looking one there, too. For a split second, I thought it was Cyborg. I was like, oh, right, 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 the guy before, like, well, I guess Steel... He was even before, he was even before, um, Cy- he was, uh, Cyborg was even before him, but just for a split second, yeah. Um, wonder if they're ever going to try and do anything and bring Steel back in any big bad way. Every once in a while he pops in, like, hey, I'm here, like, he, he was there for a minute at the beginning of the new 52, like, as Superman was stomping, um, 
was stomping Brainiac. He came in, he was like an employee of LexCorp, and he just went renegade with like, hey, I'm taking some of this tech, I'm going to use it for good or whatever, something to that effect. Um, and they got the one where he's like fighting Silver Banshee. Yeah, there's just this one's just a lot of really cool, um, just single pictures, just saying uh, Superman's whole um, cry, uh, like retconned like timeline here, which I think is pretty awesome. Another one... Here's one that left me a little confused. I liked it either way, but it's a little kind of confusing. It's the one by Tom King and Clay Man, And this is called uh, Of Tomorrow. And it looks like the world's about to end. And Superman's almost just talking to himself, kind of eulogizing his parents to some extent. And essentially just saying... It's all about to end, and this is the last time I can be here. So I miss you guys. I love you. He takes he reach he reaches in, forms like a crystal, make uh, makes a little sculpture of his family out of it, puts it down next to a plaque that says in loving memory of uh, of, Tom, of Jonathan and Martha Kent, and you see the world around him destroying. Now I'm not, and they say what happens right there is the earth, the sun is getting too close to the earth. Now here's my question here, and I wasn't entirely sure. If uh -huh. this was, like, so far in the future, Superman is the only one left, or is the world ending and he's just going to spend his last time moments alone just thinking about his parents? I wasn't really sure what that, which, what that was right here. What I think that one started going for is it's supposed to be almost like, since all these stories are kind of little micro ones, it's almost like he just wanted to write, like, the total, like, almost, like, last six pages or whatever of, like, a Superman story. Like, the total end-end of a Superman story. It's almost like you don't get, like, what happened. There's probably supposed to be, like, 11 issues beforehand that would explain to how this was all going down. But instead, you're just getting the little pocket of the end and just this last, like, kind of very nice moment. And that's how I kind of look at it as. Like, the you know, it's, it's literally the world's ending. There's nothing Superman can do. This is just how it's going down. And this is how he decides to end it. Because he says a line right here. It says, Earth's been abandoned for what? A good four billion years? Which I'm wondering if he's just talking about Earth's past. You know, periods where there was no life on the planet between, you know, us and the dinosaurs or whatever. And, um, or if he's talking about in his situation now. Has he just been chilling here for four billion years because Superman apparently can't die or he doesn't age? There's different versions. Some versions, oh yeah, he uh, just ages really well has a little bit of gray in his beard. It's been, you know, 60 years. Looks like he's only aged 10 years. Mm -hmm. And then there's other versions where like, oh no, he can't get old as long as he's hanging out by a red sun or a, uh, by a yellow sun. Yeah, and it's like, I don't know. Or is it like, did he, was he sent into the future just really far or something like that? You yeah, because he's talking about his son. He's talking about his son. He's talking about Lois. Like, oh, how are they doing? They're doing great, Ma. They're great, doing great, Dad. This that, and that fucking so. kid, let me tell you about it. Just starts going in at it like, God damn it. Pa, how did you ever raise me? I, I can't even fucking teach this kid anything. He doesn't listen to a goddamn word I say. He's worse than that fucking kid with the Axl Rose haircut from that fucking Death of Superman run. Shit. And grateful little fuck. <laughs> just like world's about dying. That's all he can do is just go on about how much he fucking hates his kid. You know what? World's <laughs> ending. He's not here. I'm the last one left. I'm just going to say it. I hate my fucking son. There, <laughs> there I fucking fuck said it. it. What if, what if, shocker here, what if I let him die? Hmm? Yeah, that mean, it's not the most super thing to do, but shit, everyone has a fucking limit. <laughs> yeah, just Even like that. Superman. <laughs> I'm the only one left. Who's going to judge me? What? Literally, who's going to judge me? Just fucking just like mountains of lava just shooting out of the fucking ground like i don't give a fuck whatever i saved this world a thousand fucking times so what if i turned a blind corner and my own kid died guess how many other people's kids i fucking saved more than this little fucker i'll tell you that much right now <laughs> but uh yeah no i think that that story though i almost kind of like that's one of those few times where like having almost like you kind of make up what you think's happening it like works because it's so short that it is supposed to be just kind of like you kind of put the pieces together of however you think this story kind of got to here. I think personally he's been there for a long time and he's outlived everybody else. Uh, the only, cause I only hope that because I'd like to think he spent his last, not to get all overly sympathetic about a character who doesn't exist right now, but 
I'd like to think in his last moments, if he wasn't saving the world or evacuating someone, he was spending it with Lois and his son. You know what I mean? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I kind of agree there too, because that, that's that's the Superman way is almost is like the ultimate kind of like family person, like you know the guy who's gonna do the best. Where Batman's like, "Fuck y'all, I'm gonna go sit out here on the moon and wait till this all goes over." I got I got my Bat Moon base. You'll <laughs> never see it coming. You just there's like, "Where's Batman hiding?" They just look at the moon. They just see like a big bat symbol on it. Oh motherfucker! God, he's the one who bought all that real estate on, on the moon. <laughs> bought it from Elon Musk. Yeah, exactly. It's okay. He he gave him like a little cottage on the on the on the far side of the state. Yeah, but uh, but that's emphasis all... on little. <laughs> yeah, on little. Shit, I need a place for my bat moon. The bat moon. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no. Th- this book is just filled with all kinds of these almost like little neat stories. Like um, I also like that Brian um or fucking um, Brad Meltzer one. Like that one's kind of cool too because it's only like that's another one too. It's like five pages but it's almost like the kind of the cool thing of like how you can kind of tell like a little micro story in such a short amount of time and it almost even reminds me of like the old like comic strips of like superman when he used to be like you know you'd look at the newspaper and it'd literally have like maybe two two strips and that was all of the superman you're gonna get for that week and i think that character he saves in there i think that's a character from one of his own books the the lila lady? yeah lila mm-hmm well, it's just kind of cool because it's just like Superman's calculating out like this guy's got a gun to this lady's head and he's like, I'm going to fucking pull the trigger. Don't you fucking dare. And Superman's flying. And he's like, I don't know if I can make it fast to time. And then he goes and he calculates out like how long this bullet will take in a 45 to travel. You know, he tells the exact feet. The Disney's like, there is literally not enough time. I've done the math. There's no way I can make it there. I know how fast I can go. And it's like, as he's kind of going... He hears the lady sort of pushes her head towards the gun, ballsy like, which makes the gun pop back off, giving just enough amount of like room so Superman can get there in time in just the amount of seconds. And it's like in that process, he's like, "Hey, you're pretty good at fucking like getting out of danger. Here, why don't you become a cop? See how many bullets you can dodge this time." <laughs> why stop at one? <laughs> Shit, you know what I mean? Like most people that join up to be police officers are afraid of bullets. Clearly, you put your head against the gun. <laughs> Just daring him. Dare you, bitch. But no, I thought that was just a really cool, like, it's just like, there's just cool ways to tell, like, little micro stories, almost. The one it opens up with is, is, uh, it's Superman fighting an army in space. And, uh, he gets back to Earth, and they have this whole Superman celebration day. And he's, the whole time, everyone's like... Superman gone save my life. I was addicted to crack cocaine, and Superman came in, and not that exactly. It was just all these different people. (laughs) Dad, who let that fucker up there? It's like, oh, listen, son, you know, you gotta let them all talk. He's like, and I was living under a bridge, and I would suck anything for a quarter. (laughs) Okay, thank you. Cock, pussy, animal, it didn't matter. If you had a quarter, I sucked. (laughs) <laughs> it's just like oh god he, he just keeps going on and stuff like yes okay well thank you and one day uh, superman you, I, came i got more to say if it was you know one day superman came and i said well for that size cock i need 50 cents <laughs> and he gave me a whole sock full of <laughs> he gave me a whole sock full of quarters and i was like well you know I, i've sucked a lot in my life i don't but i don't know if my lips can handle this he's like no 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 go get a real fucking job get off of this crack quit sucking dick quit sucking pussy out in the public 80 years 80 years it's just like and that was that was my last day so that part uh well that whole thing so they just bring up different people not a guy sucking dick at a point almost there's a guy who's on like the verge of that he was like this guy was like i was in jail in and out i kept on doing bad but superman saw good in me and kept on Got me on the right track. Thank you, Superman. There's like one guy who just came across that way in the book. He was like a henchman. That He was like a low-level thug that became like a henchman. And Superman looked out for me and now he got me on the right track. But the whole time, Superman's kind of being distracted and saying like, I'm pretty sure that invasion's come back. There's no way it's that easy. There's no way that easy. Like, Clark, you got to get up there. They're calling your names. Yeah, there's actually an invasion going on. I can't fucking be here for this. I got to take care of that. But, but Clark, like, and then he goes up and like, Lois stalls him like, "Oh hey, what's up? Just go back to the thing. Don't don't worry about it." And she's like, "He's like, what do you mean? Don't worry about it? Like, oh, we got it all taken care of. Like, why did you guys not call me?" He's like, "Cause even you need a day off." And like, what do you mean? They turns and all the 
Just League and everybody else is down there. Like, they were taking care of that so he could have a day off. And that was, like... I like I really like that. This is one of those things where maybe I'm being a little too hard and maybe something happened recently in continuity to change it. I really like that, but it's just kind of one or rather two small little things about that splash panel with everybody in there with all the major DC universe characters in there. It's mm-hmm. like, "Oh, cool. We got Batman, we got Batgirl, we even got Booster Gold, we got Hawkeye, we got a bunch of Green Lanterns, you got Firestorm, Green Spectre, Raven. Oh, look, Green look, Arrow, Deathstroke standing in the back for that, some fucking What the fuck is Deathstroke and Harley Quinn doing back there? That's the fucking <laughs> that's my fucking question. I mean, maybe something happened in like more recent stories where he's more like a Deadpool, not like in a funny way, but where he's like a villain turned anti-hero. Or same thing with Harley Quinn. I know that sometimes she would go on adventures with Power Girl, but I'm sorry. It's like, he tried to kill Superman multiple times, and you just can't suck the Joker's dick and suddenly be on stage. Go like, yay! Yay, Superman! Woo! I know, that's what I think, too. I'm like, dude, that could be anybody else right there. That could be, like, I mean, like, okay, I'll say this. Harley Quinn, I feel like, is just... I. I will say if she, if she was there by herself, I'd be like, okay, I know why she's there because Harley Quinn's like she's like the other Batman. You just slap her on a cover and shit sells. But Deathstroke, as those ones, I know they're trying to make Deathstroke a bigger character, and I, it's like one of those ones. Where it's like anywhere else but here. This is not even a Batman book. Like just let Deathstroke be. Just let, pull him out of this and let it be. You know, fuck. Who are we missing? We're missing somebody. Fucking Tim Drake is not even fucking missing- in here. Even though I guess Tim Drake we got, did he come back to life by this point? Maybe Fuck he did. I don't he, know. He could have came back to life at this party. Shit. Just, just this corpse in like a coffin, like like he's a fucking outlaw, like a dead outlaw on display. <laughs> I know. It's like if anything, put Lobo in there or something. Like somebody. Lobo is like, a member of the Justice Society. He's yeah. he's he he got he he ironed a lot of that shit out. Yeah, he's more of an antihero than a villain now. Deathstroke and Harley Quinn still have some time before they do that shit. Yeah. So it's like. Yeah, I mean, that could have been, like, the question. That could have been, um, Zan- oh, I think Zantana's in there somewhere. Is she? Uh, no, no, she's not. I don't no, see Zantana. She's not in there. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that's Zantana. I think that's Donna Troy back there. Yeah, so, I yeah. Think you're right. And it's one of those ones. I see uh, Starfire, and there's um, Black Canary and Green Arrow, and uh, fucking um, Duke's in there. He's, like, yeah, so here's, bar- here's, he's barely here's poking Reef. out. Like, he can... I'm here. <laughs> Uh, is that Duke or is that is that Wally West? Is that oh, like maybe that's Wally. Yeah, you know, you're probably right. That's probably Wally West. They just both have that yellow outfit. Yeah. Oh, now his name's the Signal. Apparently, for a while, because I never heard him what they called him. I just always heard Duke. Get over here, Duke. Get over there. He's the Signal. Good boy, get over here. <laughs> Whoa, wrong time, wrong time, dude. Just... You've been drafted into a war that you can't get out of. <laughs> Come on, grab my grab my luggage. Oh, that's, uh, you know, should we tell him? I understand that this is a job and I'm just kind of doing it, but uh, maybe you should just rephrase the way you're saying that. What? Pick a different noun. A boy can grab luggage. You know what I mean? When I was a boy, I, well, I didn't grab luggage, but you know, (laughs) I was, I was, I was more privileged. Yeah. As for others. I I didn't have those problems that, uh, uh, your people, I mean, (laughs) this is not working out. Uh, shit. Where's my Tim at? Damn it, he's fucking dead. Oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but, um, no, there is, like, a couple that kind of just kind of got by me. There's the, um, five minutes one, which is kind of like a day in the life, like, hey, Clark, you gotta go get this shit done and thing. What's taking so long? You know, and then he goes, yeah, out you saves stupid a bunch fuck. Of Can't you get anything done? He's like, oh, I'm trying my best. Yeah, like, your best does anything. <laughs> then gets back just in time to get the, to get the article done. I'm like, oh, you just missed Superman, Jimmy? Oh, what the fuck's wrong with you? Oh, I'm sorry, Barry. <laughs> just over there slapping Jimmy around. <laughs> Looks like it. He's, uh, he's grabbing him by the back. The last panel of this story is him grabbing him by the back of the collar. Like, <laughs> boy, you're going to get my belt. <laughs> yeah. He's like, but I, you don't even pay me. It's like, you're not worth it. There's one, there's one that I find funny, which is the Action Land one, which is the one written by Paul Dini. That one's and a cool one. I like that one, actually. What's interesting about it is it starts off like Superman. They're like, oh, hey, welcome to Action Land. It's a theme park all about Superman and his whole history. And it's going through his history to get on this ride. It's kind of like a, 
um, the Walt Disney historical tour thing. He's like, as we go our way through here, this is Krypton. And then he began to Smallville, and this is where he fought Darkseid. He's going through this, and that's where he lost in his in his greatest battle ever, and where every superhero has his end, and Superman's greatest foe of all time, Mister Mixelplex. And you're like, what the <laughs> fuck? And as you're watching it, as you're watching it, the girl, like the 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 stewardess, starts to fuck up. Her dialogue and the audience. Oh come on! Oh come on! The audience all turns back into Mister Mixelplex. Like, look, I'm not. I'm just saying. I get it. It's your turn. But when we role play, it's a little one sided. You know, there's really nothing for me right here. <laughs> I'm just saying everything you want me to say. I'm sorry. I can't get it just right. <laughs> I like how it's just like Mixelplex is just like he's like, yeah, just get it. Have Superman hit me harder. Yeah. It's, oh. Then have him rub his big fucking manly cock over my face. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's like they could all they could all shape shift, so I'm sure that's happened a few times. Yeah, exactly. It's just that's like fucking his fantasy is him like fucking fighting Superman. So this is what I do before I I fuck. I need to have my smoking hot redhead girlfriend turn into Superman, <laughs> slap me with her super cock. <laughs> yeah, turn me over, bend me over this bed right here, and just go at it as I'm in a theme park, fucking riding around like the Universal tour. He definitely, you know, even though he's kind of commanding the scene, Mr. Mixoplex does look kind of a little bit, not, doesn't really look like an alpha. He's the short, balding guy with a goofy little baller cap on the side. He's got this tall, vixen, redhead girlfriend who's just like, what do you want, baby? I don't fucking know. <sighs> I know, well, that one just feels, it feels very Paul Denny, because that almost even seems like kind of Paul Denny style, is like, you got kind of like a goofy character guy, and then he's just, they got like really like bubbly kind of hot wives or what have you. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, the one at the very end, I do want to say this. The Brian Michael Bendis one that's all, like, drawn Jim by Lee. Jim Lee. That's cool, and I'm looking forward to the rest of that. I will say, and I get it, it's comics, they gotta make money. It does seem weird for number 1,000 of Superman, you ended on a cliffhanger with him about to get stabbed in the heart. I think it should have ended on one of the more heartfelt issues... Or one of the more short, heartfelt stories. To me, like, that's what Superman's all about. Where this one's just like, I'm gonna fucking kill you! To be continued. Yeah, and I do feel like... I, I feel this book should have worked a little bit stronger, almost. I, I kind of agree there, too. I thought that was a little bit odd. I mean, I, I get it. That's almost like, shit, we're getting random people showing up to buy this comic. Let's get them hooked, you know what I mean? Put a bag of coke in there, you know what I mean? They'll come back for more, you know? Yeah. And I feel and like... That's Bendez like and Jim Lee is a great team up, but yeah, sorry, go ahead. And I feel like that's sort of what they were shooting for, but it is one of those ones, like, I think this should have been just a nice standalone, it should have just all been little short stories, just like, how awesome fucking Superman is, because here's the thing, even if somebody buys it, maybe they've never bought a Superman comic in, like, a long time, or ever, if anything, and they just pick this one up, who knows, by reading these stories, they might go, fuck, maybe I want to read some more, like, yeah, I don't think you need a, I don't think you need the cliffhanger on this type of book. Mm-hmm. No, that's not enough to ruin it. I actually do want to get that uh, that book series when it's up. That one, I'm actually probably going to wait until... I've been buying a little bit more single issues of particular books lately. But that one, I think I'm probably going to wait till graphic novel. I just like having... Plus, that gives me more time to actually read this ridiculous stack of um, Superman I actually got to get through. Because uh, there's, there's a bunch of Superman that where New 52 Superman dies, Superman from original Earth 1 or whatever takes his place... And then there's multiple stories all about that, and I gotta try and crank those out. And then we get to where it's at now in Superman Rebirth, which um, I like. Have, have you read any of the stuff with, uh, aside from this, have you read any of the stuff with Superman's son, John? No, I never have. I always, I wanted to pick up that, like, Superman and Boy or Superman and Son book or whatever the fuck that was called. Or maybe it was. I, I haven't read that Super one. Son. I, I, have... I guess it was Super Sons, I think is what it called. Super, Superman and Boy. <laughs> Superman boy. <laughs> Superman <laughs> comma boy. Boy. <laughs> no, that that one, Super Sons, is really good. Um, I bought the first ish the first volume of that, just out of curiosity. And the thing about it is part of me bought it a little kind of like, alright, is this gonna be a I hope it's not too kiddy, because you know, it's starring a ten year old and like a a thirteen year old. So mm -hmm. but it's kind of interesting seeing you know, Robin calling the shots around the son of Superman. And they kind of do have this back and forth, you know, like Superboy is kind of like, 
he is trying to live up and be like more like his dad, and he's very he idolizes. They, they both idolize their dads in a different way. Like Batman, he like like uh, Tim Dr- not Tim Dr- uh, Damian, Damian sees his dad like. He's the greatest there ever is, and I only just want to be like him just because he's so cool at what he does. And, you know, you maybe not say it like that, but he'll even say things like, oh, I'm better than Superman, than Batman at times. He'll say that kind of shit. But he, deep down, you see he really wants to be the next Batman. And then where uh, Jonathan, Clark's son, wants to be, yeah, sure, he likes the power and he likes that, but he more wants to be like his dad, not for how cool he is, but for... He's like the nicest guy ever. Uh huh. I, I don't know why I just started picturing like, what if instead it was like Superman's son was just this little like fat, short, overweight kid who's like, oh, I don't really want to go outside, Damien. <laughs> just like the exact opposite of what Superman is. Like, oh, can we just stay inside? And I, I got some bagel bites we could bake. <laughs> he doesn't have any powers. <laughs> Wait, he has powers. It's just they're all like very like almost like like just toned down. Like somebody's like, oh. I could sort of, I, I shot lasers out of my eyes once. It was kind of cool. I heated up, you know, a leftover piece of pizza, but then I had to go take a four-hour nap afterwards. <laughs> All those calories. <laughs> I had an intake of my own way, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just like, one of those, like, just like this, the shittiest kind of like, like almost like we, we just think like the most loser kid ever. It's just like where Superman's like, oh, I don't know if we can have this kid. I, I, I can't have this kid be walking around on the street. It's just, it's just not going to look good. Yeah, Here's I'm, not, the thing. You know, I'm not really into crime fighting, you know. Just it's just not my thing, you know. I, I, I know. Going to, I was going into graphic design. <laughs> it's, like, it's like the exact opposite. Like it's like, hey, son, you're like, come on, let's go see a good old fashioned baseball game. Oh, I don't know, Dad. That's that's a lot of manliness and running around and it's outdoors and you know how the sun gets. <laughs> oh, the sun gives us our powers. And like, yeah, but. If I stand too long, I get woozy, and uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> you get like, <laughs> you get like. Um, the thing about that is, he has a he has. They both have super hearing, so there can never be a moment where, because you know, every parent at some point has to talk to the other parent and say like, "I just don't know what the fuck's wrong with him. We got to figure this out." Or they just have the breakdown moment, like, "We got to figure this out," because I don't want the kid to grow up to be like this. Or they can never have that moment where he's just like. Lois, let's face it. Our kid's a fucking loser. He's not going to amount to anything. He has super hearing. You can hear that from all the way to the other side of the country. So, It was the weekend. And you know what he told me he wanted to do? He said he wanted to go see the Marvel movie marathon where they were going to play all 19 movies in a row. And he wasn't going to leave his seat. He wasn't going to leave his seat. What the fuck is he going to... Like, he's not our son. He's not our son, Lois. He's not our son. His goal was to see how long he could sit for. <laughs> I think he's still there. <laughs> the movie ended two days ago. Well, yeah, and yeah, I took him there. You know, shit. I mean, like, I thought that was probably the best choice because I don't know. If not, he was just going to sit there and complain about, like, why the TV wasn't big enough at home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like the yeah, idea that he. You know, like the TV's the... just so far away. You know, 55 inches just, you know, if, if we really had a 76 inch, I think I could sit more comfortably. You know, the thing is, he has super sight. He just kind of, like, faintly has to squint his eyes, and he can see 3,000 miles away. But even with a 77-inch, he still says, oh, it's too much, it's too much. He has all the fucking powers, he just doesn't use them. You think he at least uses super speed to go to fucking McDonald's or go get some fucking chocolate-covered Twinkies or some bullshit, but No! No, he fucking uses one of those fucking apps where the guy brings him a pack of Twinkies. <laughs> and he doesn't then, even tip he, him. He just I said, seen him, Lois. Whenever, he doesn't he, tip. Whenever he tries to use one of his powers, he says the reason he doesn't like to use it is it makes him break a sweat. <laughs> and he's like, like oh, son, if you just work it like a muscle, it becomes easier over time. <laughs> oh, muscles sound too intimidating. Oh, I- <laughs> You know, Dad. That you know that that sounds nice and all, but I, you know, I really just want to be surrounded by comfort. You know, it's just, you know, just can we just make a room just full of pillows and blankets, and and I can just roll around in there just in my <laughs> underwear. I can like put a little, I can cut a hole in the ground so I can just roll over to that, take a shit, and if I need to, they just roll back over. <laughs> like, like make it real easy. You know, I, I it's just. 
Work is just strenuous, you know? Fucking millennials. <laughs> just like such, she's like, just the worst fucking kid. Be like, hey, hey, Clark, what's going on? Oh, no. Hey, hey, Hal, how's it going? He's like, dude, where's your son at? You know, dude, I, I, I got fucking tickets to the hockey game. Gonna be fucking sick. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you know, he's got all that homework to be done. Homework? <laughs> Like, you know, you know how homework, fuck that shit, hockey, just like, <laughs> yeah, how about we just go instead, you know, make it a guy's night, you know, guy's night, you know, I don't know. Your son's a guy? Well, I don't know about that, he's, oh, shit. A guy is not the right word. Oh. He's definitely oh. a boy. Oh, I get it. I, 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 I understand. We got a green lantern that's, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Sounds like not that. Not there's anything wrong with that, he's not that. He's something else. <laughs> Is he transitioned yet? No, dude, not none of that shit either. I just, I can't explain. Here, just, just let me show you. Let me show day? you. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. I, like, hey man, I, I got an idea. What if we just? Well, I don't know. Even with your super strength, I don't know if you can lift that fat fuck up. What if we just like? Rolled him to the phantom zone. I mean, you know, whatever happens, happens there. And maybe he'll come back stronger. Maybe he will. I mean, push it comes it's push or shove down there, right? It's like, okay, maybe if we use our powers together, fucking Green Lantern goes to lift the kid up from a distance, just like the ring's like, gee, 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 gee. He's not working. It's just like it sounds like a pick, tr- back, like pickup truck backing up as the ring's going up. Like, oh, fuck. It's like power level 1%. Oh. No, amount of, no amount of courage or imagination can pull this off. Fantasy told you to just go fuck yourself. This ain't happening. <laughs> no, like, that's the reason why he let this kid die. Like, yeah, I fucking said it. My kid's a fucking disappointment. <laughs> this is the reason why. He literally, when he heard the word Netflix and binge, he never stopped. He watched everything on Netflix and said that was his superpower. <laughs> he doesn't even need a fucking... He can name every show, not just every like Netflix original show, every fucking show on Netflix off the top of his head, say the cast, say the crew, the directors, the writers. He just fucking knows that. It's a steel trap for useless fucking information. That's his fucking superpower. That and ordering Twinkies on his mother's fucking credit card. (laughs) It's real shameful. I I tried everything to get him out of there, but it's just not working. Just not working, you know? 80 years. 80 years. <laughs> I, just, I just want to say that at the end of every one of these offbeat stories. Well, it's funny because it's like, it reminds me of like, there's that, the, the We Are Robin, like, fucking, like, little mini run thing. And it was one of those ones, there was one issue, like, you literally fucking opened it up. I want to say it was, like, the last, where it wasn't We Are Robin, it was the, like, Robin War section. And you yeah. opened up one of the last issues. It might have been a We Are Robin, that's probably why I'm saying that. And it just opens up with just, like, fat pudgy looking kid who's dressed in a robin outfit just looks so fucking like sad and like oh i don't know if we should be here fellas you know <laughs> <laughs> and i was like i was laughing so fucking hard like because it was like literally like the first picture when you open the book up it's just like oh and it's like a splash page of this fat kid like in a medium shot that is fucking awesome <laughs> It's just like probably Duke's like, come on, you fat fuck, let's go do this. We gotta continue. This. I can't remember what the war was over, but it's like something to do with like Court of Owls or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just like oh, birds. I get it. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's you know, they they got a, you know, they got the new Roseanne on TV at home. Just saying. <laughs> John Goodman's back. He didn't. Turns out he didn't die. <laughs> yeah. So um, I was thinking maybe I. Should I'd like just go not back. to die. You know. I, I, I could kind of, I could be on the cell phone. I'll be, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be like the Punisher's, you know, helper. You know, I'll be like that guy, you know, except for I'll be at home with my feet up. Watching you know, Roseanne. Watching Roseanne with a take and bake burrito. Idolizing John Goodman's physique. Yeah. You know, of aspiring of what, to, what I could be. <laughs> if I just lost a little bit of weight, you know, I could get to like, you know, a, a large size. <laughs> just Duke's like. Who the fuck hired this guy? Like, out of everybody's like, well, you know, he showed up. We had a space available. We we had we bought that X, you know, L three costume. I guess we had to use it at some point. 
It's like that part in fucking Space Jam when fucking Ed Knight comes in. And he's just like, well, not only am I slow, not only am I fat, am I, am I fat but I'm slow and large and a dork. So <laughs> I just beat the fuck and destroy the mental stability of this fucking poor kid. I know, but uh, oh, that, that made me laugh. If you ever get a chance, find that issue six of fucking Robin War and crack that first page open just to see that picture. Because that's almost like how I picture like this, the fat Superman son to look like is that kid. Well, I can just sort of imagine what he looks like. Is he just kind of like, what comes to mind is a less Asian version of the fat kid from Up. Yeah, kind of like that. I think he's a little bit older, maybe like 10 years old instead of, well, I don't know what the fuck, kid. You know you know how those Pixar characters are. They're all short and stubby. Sometimes you can't always tell their age. Yeah, yeah. No, I can see that. Um, no, but on, on, back to the main note, though. Action <laughs> Comics 1000. Yeah. 1000. It's, actually, it's pretty good. Definitely worth a read. Even if you just know who Superman is and you're aware of Superman, I'm going to say there's still some good stories in here. There might be a few little hints and nods that are just kind of like, what was that about? But if you just know about Superman, I think there's enough here, and there's some heart to it. So The only thing is, in like the last issue, the last story, it's cool. It's just maybe not the right place for it, just because it's more of a leading into what's coming up next. And you had all these stories that were essentially these micro-stories about what makes Superman great in the first place. Where this is more of just... It's a slam fest, and those are cool, but it ends on this cliffhanger note, which so it feels a little bit more like a commercial at the end. But still, regardless of that, those last like four or five pages, it's still worth reading. Oh yeah, no, it's totally awesome. And it also is one of those kind of comics is like you just gotta sort of know of Superman. Like the nice thing is, is like by the time you finish reading this, I feel like it's a good like almost like gateway comic too, because it would just kind of give you a good idea of a bunch of like who Superman is, who some of his villains are who some of his friends are, who the Justice League are, and almost like all this kind of like nice information, history and so on, all kind of throughout it, which I think that makes it kind of a nice, like, it's a good, it's almost like a good jumping on spot to give you like almost like 80 years summed up in like, you know, 90 pages or 80 pages Mm -hmm. probably. It's probably, that's probably about how long it is just with, you know, the bonus covers and so on. Yeah, definitely. Whether you uh, read comics or not, as long as you just like Superman, definitely worth your time. Yeah, so I would say, yeah, highly recommended. It was one of the ones that was just like, it was a historic event. Like, you gotta get the comic. Like, why would you not get it? And I actually wanted to kind of buy the physical comic of it. And I even thought, because I was like, the day it came out, I was like, oh, shit, I'm like, I'm only like 20 minutes away from Modesto. But I'm like, you know what? I don't want to drive that far and then have everybody be like, oh, yeah, it's sold out already. Tough luck. So it's just like, fuck it. Sounds, like it. Comics, man, it sounds like if you get the comicsology version, you might get another story or two that I didn't get. Yeah, well, I don't know. It's like... Um, I know it's, I probably get all the covers, like, cause they have, you know, in the very beginning, it's like you flip through like, you know, eight variant covers or whatever. And it's got one from like thirties, forties, fifties, sixties, seventies, eighties, nineties, two thousands and so on. But, uh, yeah, I got the forties one. Oh, did you get that one? That, that one's a cool one. They're all pretty sweet though. It's like, I don't know. I was flipping through. I'm like, damn, those are all pretty cool. Does the nineties one, but, does it uh, have but, in the black outfit? No, it doesn't actually. It has them in, um, let's see. What's the nineties one? Out of the way, fucking, like, thing that doesn't show me the time frame. What's that one? That one is, Blue uh, and red Superman? 70s. That's 70s. The 80s one's fucking sick looking. It almost it kind of reminds me of, like, movie Superman, sort of. And it's got just a cool, I don't know who the fuck did it. Joshua Middleton. And then, um, the, the 90s one, oddly enough, it doesn't actually look 90s to me. It actually looks more, it's, I think it's kind of got, like, a Lois and Clark sort of look to it. But the, the art style looks like, uh, modern comic book arts. It almost feels like something out of, like, uh, Rebirth. Oh, okay. And it's, oddly enough, it's drawn by Dan Jurgens. <laughs> well, the name of the, of the story he, he's doing is Lois and Clark. That was the name of the story of where it's all, because that story, Superman's been in hiding for the last couple of years, while New 52 Superman's been doing shit on New 52 World, our super, original Superman has still been doing shit, and just more in the shadows. He's been more of almost kind of like just being very 
trying to stay under the radar and do things at night. So he kind of, he has to, or he acts, or sometimes he goes to the other side of the world where it's all sunny so he could actually get his powers that way while he's up and stuff. So it's one of those kind of things. So actually, no, like, he's wearing the black suit so it could absorb light so he can do shit at night. That's what it is. Okay. Oh, that's kind of cool. It's funny that like on the 2000s cover, it just literally like, it just looks like bro Superman. He's like kind of hovering above and he's got his hand kind of out. Like, like, yo, what's up? So you so you crash back there on your ATV. You need some help? <laughs> yeah, bro. Come on. And once we get you all patched up, we're gonna go to Alpies get some Jello shots. Hell yeah! Look, they got happy hour going, so you can get you know beer for half price. The boys are back in town. Then. <laughs> Uh, but no, yeah, definitely check this book out, and if you can, get those cool, like, covers. I guess if you get them on Comixology, you get all the covers, and you can print them out and just own them all and paste them around your house. That's probably not what DC wants you to do, but you can. It's an option. <laughs> it's an option there. But, um, yeah, that was a, a fun little podcast to talk about some good old Superman. I feel like we've, we're have we always batman it up, but it's been a while since we've really had, like, Superman in, like, the fold. And since there's always people out there that want to try to tell us how Superman's not cool, I feel like it's always good to come out and go, no, Superman's fucking awesome. And that's the bottom line. Nothing going to change that. No, it's probably not going to change their opinion. Be like, yeah, fuck you. I'm still not no, I'm saying it. nothing's going to change Superman being oh, awesome. Yeah. I mean, nothing's going to stop him. Nothing's going to stop. Okay, we're probably just going on and on now. But um, check out oldmanorange.com for more podcasts, comics, movies, animations, and more. Check out Pizza Boys, the comic Pizza Boys with a Z. The graphic novel's out and Issue Five's out. Uh, issue Five is Comic of the Week on Comic Central. So go check that out there. That's where it's at the moment. It will eventually come up on Amazon and Comixology as time goes on. But um, get that Pizza Boys going. Check out Superman. Or I keep saying Superman 1000, but it's Action Comics 1000 featuring Superman. And I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. And I'm Ryan Dunnigan. And we'll see you some other time. Later, folks. Thanks again for listening to the Old Man Orange podcast. Be sure to check out oldmanorange.com for more podcasts, comics, animations, videos, and a whole lot more. You can easily support the show by buying something from one of our Amazon links on the website or in the show's description itself. Doesn't cost you a penny, but every single thing you buy from there just by using that link to take you to Amazon helps us out a bit. You can also really help the show out, though, by spreading the word the good old-fashioned way and rate and review us on all the sites that you find this podcast. Anything from iTunes to Podbean to Newgrounds, YouTube, you name it, any little bit helps. Give a sub and share it to your friends, family, any jamoke you see out on the street, you let them know about Old Man Orange Podcast. And be sure to check out the Old Man Orange comic book, Pizza Boys, on both Amazon and Comixology. Till then... We'll see you some other time.